Uh, me and Andrew have been thinking about uh, the evolution challenge question. Um, has biological evolution come to an end? This is the first question. I'm going to shoot through these because uh, we're low on time. Yes, self-domestication shields individuals from natural selection, uh, says my uh, friend. No, says John Hawkes. That natural selection, actually, uh, the, the drift uh, caused by this shielding actually allows these genes to be selected on another place, uh, another sort of feature. Maybe... Uh, says Peter Godfrey Smith. In fact, if you see a change in evolution, what's more likely happening is there's a difference, there's a change in the unit of selection, maybe from the gene to the individual or the individual to the uh, group. Is belief an emergent property? Yes, says Tamil Kaminsky. Belief in a higher power is a useful tool for coordination. If you imagine yourself in the forest, you, you're a group of hunter gatherers, it's really late, you're tired or bored or scared. What you want is belief in a higher power that's either going to punish you or reward you. Of course, uh, evidence can disrupt that belief, so what you want to do is put that belief a long way away or make it invisible um, or in incredibly dangerous, and we can see some of these features in the religions of today. Third question, will advanced computers use humans as batteries? Uh, as Andrew's pointed out, where the hell do you think they were getting their power from? <laughs> At some point, there's a human shoveling coal into a furnace to supply these computers. We think a more interesting question is, what happens when computers are not reliant on humans uh, for power. We are, of course, talking about the robot apocalypse, <laughs> uh, robots taking over. But, of course, so just, you know, in the hope that they don't actually kill us, the, the hope is that they will, um, their intelligence will help solve our problems. They'll bring us a deeper understanding of the universe. Um, but will ma advanced machines really gain a deeper understanding our, of our universe? Uh, yes, says Alpha Hubler. Uh, machine intelligence can grow unrestrained by biological evolution. No, says Ian M. Banks, not such an academic source. Still, uh, it's the best one I could find, interestingly. He says, even machines are subject to the dependency principle. Everyone has an off switch uh, that's located somewhere. Um, but thinking about this a bit closer, there, if we consider there are two types of problems in the universe. One of them is natural problems, solving physics. How does gravity work? How does biology work? And also things like finding food and navigating uh, environments. But there is another class of problems, uh, cultural problems. Um, this involves communication uh, and finding out how to interact uh, with people. This is usually re re relegated to a higher level, higher, more cognitive being. Sorry, I don't have my notes. Um, <laughs> natural problems are universal and they're constant. Cultural problems are context-dependent and dynamic. Um, and this is going to cause a problem because if the lightly structure of an artificially intelligent, hyper-advanced machine is going to be self-organizing and distributed. Um, so this is what the name of the man that I had in my notes that I was trying to remember and gave us a talk on distributed systems. Good. Um, so they require a communication pro protocol to communicate between the two, um, between the different units. And this communication protocol needs, needs to be robust. And as I Nihat was showing us, robustness is a lower bound on complexity. So we'd expect the more robust something becomes, the more complex something becomes. And I was talking about my lab's work showing that language can become more um, complex in a specific way um, because of this bottleneck. Uh, AIs are also going to be adaptive, which means they can only solve problems that they can adapt to. And they will solve problems that they can adapt to. Um, so let's think about this problem as a, a sort of an encoding problem. You have a source reality, the boundary conditions of the universe. This is encoded into an observable universe, which we can perceive through a perception channel and decode using our cognition. Uh, this brings us to an understanding of the universe. And what we'd like to see is this understanding matching up with the reality uh, over time. And maybe machines can help us do this. Why might they not? Well, uh, the unfortunate thing is that any organism can affect the universe through action. Um, and the difference with the special thing about humans is we ha can have a cumulative effect on the universe through culture. Um, so, like we were mentioning, there is a natural problem and there's the cultural uh, problem. Um, cultural problems are easy to solve because they have adapted to our cognition through this feedback loop. They're also increasingly complex, as I uh, mentioned. Natural problems, on the other hand, are difficult to solve because uh, they haven't adapted to us, and they're also constant. So over time, what you actually see is as our cognition grows, the amount of cultural problems in the universe also grows. Um, and perhaps, as Jeffrey West has said, 
there, although natural scaling laws are sustainable, cultural scaling laws actually might become exponential. So you get an, it, an even a worse case scenario where the cultural complexity <laughs> explodes um, and you have all of your cognition not only trying to cope with the number of cultural complexity uh, problems, but also these problems are easier to solve. As um, Ian Cousins was talking about, if you give an agent the option to use a sort of natural heading and a social bias heading, they tend to use the social information because it's cheap um, and it's another thing that was in my notes. Um, so <laughs> the, if we think of the future, uh, the hope that we have is for artificially intelligent machines uh, to be these amazing problem-solving things that will help us solve uh, the world food hunger and problem and how to travel in at hyper light speeds. What we might be faced with is something more like computers that are increasingly concerned with culture. In fact, the worst case scenario is that we have machines <laughs> who are only concerned with culture and they be may become a problem for us in themselves. Uh, that's the end. <laughs> <laughs>